Hey guys and welcome back to another Android TV Box Buying Guide episode. This is episode number 8. For those of you that missed the other episodes, I will leave a link down below. We have some interesting topics, some interesting questions right over there, especially for those that are looking to purchase one of these Android TV boxes. Now, the topic of today is actually simple and complex at the same time. I will do my best as always. And the question is, are all Android TV boxes the same? The answer will be, of course, no. And let's check out why. And this video is sponsored by NordVPN, a VPN service available for almost any platform with servers in 56 countries at an affordable price. Check out the link below for more details. And we are back. So guys, one of the questions that a lot of people do is, hey Robert, there's a box with these specifications, there's another box with the same specifications. One is a lot cheaper, the other one is more expensive. Are they the same? And my answer is no. Now, if you follow the channel, you have seen two videos that I made a few days ago, one of which was a comparison between this particular box, which, uh, box sorry, which is a piece of crap right over here. There's no comparison possible, but back then I didn't know before I tested it. Now, the point is, if we look at this particular box, for example, we will see that it has the AM Logic S912 SOC, which is one of my favorite SOCs. It has three gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of flash storage with Android 7.1 and it costs roughly 70, 80 euros, uh, 80 dollars or so, something like that. Um, it's considered a budget box and that's all okay. The issue it's only that I can't use this box. It's a expensive paperweight. I've shown on the review and I will leave links down below for everything that I will mention on this video. But on the review, I did share with you guys that the box keeps crashing, it keeps rebooting. If we open apps and we use it like we use any other Android TV box, it will crash and it will reboot. I did reset it several times and the problem still persists. So it's just a piece of crap. It's something that if someone purchases this, it will have a horrible experience and will never touch another Android TV box again. So the question is, and this is a really fair question, when we look at an example for like this one that I've got right over here connected, the Minix U9H, which <laughs> works 24 seven, and we can do emulators and so on and so forth, doesn't matter right now. But if we take a look at the specifications, we will see that it has the same AM Logic S912, only two gigabytes of RAM compared to the three that this one has, 16 gigabytes of flash storage compared to the 32 that this one has, and Android 6 instead of Android 7 like this one has. By the way, Android 6 and 7 will be a topic of another video, not for today. But someone that doesn't know how these things work will uh, look at these two boxes and say, okay, so this one is cheaper and it's more advanced and the other one is more expensive. And the answer is completely wrong. Why? Especially because these guys uh, built a poorly made device. They have the sock over there, but they failed completely. I do believe that the components right over here are cheaper and I do believe also, and that's proof, the firmware really sucks. And the firmware is one of the most important parts on a development of any device that we have at our disposal. Now the main difference right over here, and Minix is just one example, is that there are some brands, and I'll show you a few examples in just a few moments, that really care about supporting their customers. They are on this business a long time ago. Others are new to this business, and when I mean new, I'm talking about two, three years. By the way, there will also be a video plans on my list of Android TV box just talking about the brands that we can expect support and uh, the ones that we can't and so on and so forth. But these are the main differences uh, because there are brands that are here to stay and other brands just want a quick buck. They will release this box this year, next year they will release another box with a different name and so on and so forth and people will keep buying but they don't know the brand and just... So my advice here is guys either play it safe and purchase anything that you see that already has been tested and the people testing it are not afraid to say this sucks because unfortunately there are a lot of people that will say 
hey, this is a great box just because the benchmarks are okay. Unfortunately, it happens. It's not the first time, but this is it, guys. This is the best that I can explain in terms of comparison. Don't look only at the specs. Look at the community feedback. None of the brands are perfect, but some of them do try to improve their products and do try to support their customers while others don't. Now, some examples of things that we can purchase and things that we can't. Uh, just examples. Right over here, I've got a Rockship 3399 uh, sock. It's a huge sock, great performance. This box is a no-go. It's a piece of crap. Uh, there is a firmware available that will improve it slightly, but nonetheless, I would not advise to purchase this one. On the other hand, another one with Rockship 3399, which works great, the R99. Uh, you will find both reviews on my channel. This, this is another example. Now, if I take a look at another box that I've got right over here, NVD Shield, for those of you that uh, want a Android TV OS, uh, um, Android TV box, if I can say so, I did explain this already on past episodes, then NVD Shield is a safe purchase. Let me place it right over here. If you want something with Android TV OS, but on the cheaper side than the Mi Box 3 international version, don't forget about that. The Chinese version, it's not for us, it's for China only. It's a bad experience. Links down below, guys. So everything that I'm talking about will be down below. This is a great option at a quarter of the price of the uh, Shields. On the other hand, if you want to go for pure Android TV boxes, then the Minix U9H, although it has Android 6, and you will say, hey, it's outdated. <laughs> it's not. It's still the fastest pure Android TV box available on the market right now. So this is a, still a safe purchase, as you guys uh, can see on the video that I did. Also, another interesting device, WeTech Play 2, which is a great experience for the TV. Check out the review down below. Also, we can have uh, Netflix, especially for Netflix, it's great. And also, if we want to connect our cable service or our satellite service, it's great. The only box that has, at least that I'm aware of, remote access, so it has a lot of features. And finally, one more example, one more example. And finally, one more example, which is the Pro Box 2 Air Plus. And this is one of the brands that has been around for, I don't know, two, three years, four years maybe, but they have been improving on their support, on building quality products and so on. So this is a great purchase. They have several devices on the brand. I could name a few more, but these are one, the ones that are solid choices. And the total opposite of this one right over here, although the specifications are very similar, with the exception of the NVIDIA Shield TV that I also reviewed here on the channel, the two versions that I've got, 2016 and 2017. And that is it, guys, for this video. I wanted to have a short video explaining, but it's almost impossible to have all these examples and so on and so forth. Hopefully, it will help you to decide along with all the other episodes, which box to get. Any questions, don't hesitate and leave them down below. I will answer as best as I can and as fast as I possible can. My name is Walter George. Don't forget that usual thumbs up and I'll see you on the next one.